Hey everyone, I've got another Tony Miles game for you today. This time we played Mikhail Tal in the Premier Hastings Christmas Congress in 1973. And in this game, Tony Miles was playing white, Mikhail Tal was playing black. And Miles said in his book that he usually plays 1e4, but he actually had a, a series of bad games with white playing 1e4. I believe it was one loss and three draws. So in this game, he decided to opt for one knight to f3. Tal responded with knight to f6, and g3 was played, and g6 by black. So it looks like white was going to opt for a double fianchetto because he plays b3 next, and Tal plays d5. Miles fianchettos his bishop to b2, and black gains more space in the centre with c5. I guess white could opt for bishop g2 here, but instead Miles decided to strike out in the centre too and play c4. And Tal played d4, so straight away he's just limiting this bishop on b2 and blocking it in. But Miles now counteracts this by playing b4. This move had to be played straight away, he says in his notes, otherwise black will play knight c6 and prevent it. So b4 undermines c5 and also undermines this d5 square if this pawn ever takes on b4. Sort of like a wing gambit. Black plays bishop to g7. And Miles now Fianchesso's his other bishop. Both sides castle. And Tal plays knight f to d7. So unleashing this bishop to protect the d4 square and maybe protecting the c5 square with the knight at the same time. Miles said here he would have preferred to play d3. But the only problem with this move is that black could potentially play queen to b6. And he felt that after a3, a5, white either has to sack a pawn or play this move, b5 which he didn't really like, because he didn't really feel that like white's going anywhere. Although white's got a nice bishop, um, this bishop on b2 is actually really bad at the moment, and the position has, has become rather blocked, so I don't really think white wants to opt for this. So maybe he made the right decision. Instead in the game he played b takes c5, Tau played knight c6, defending the pawn on d4, and Tau will take that pawn at a later date. In the game, Miles played d3 now, and Tal took on c5 with the knight, and Miles developed with knight b to d2. In his notes, he recommended that black maybe should play rook e8 here and prepare e5. If white plays rook to b1, black can play e5, the bishop can come to a3, but black now has queen to a5. And after the bishop captures on c5 and the queen recaptures, white could play knight to e4, and queen f8 prepares the move f5 and gives black quite a decent game. Although, having analysed this with an engine more recently, white can actually play the move c5 here, preparing moves like knight d6, so white is still very much in the game if black ever plays f5. But Tal didn't play rook e8, instead Tal played bishop g4. Rook b1 was played by Miles, preparing the move bishop to a3, which will hit the knight and the pawn on b7. Miles was also prepared for the move queen a5 here. If queen a5, he would have played knight to b3. So the queen can't take on a2. Instead, black will be forced to capture the knight, and after a takes b3, white's got a very good position. Equal game for both sides, to be quite honest. After rook b1, though, Tau played rook to b8, protecting the pawn on b7. In this position, Miles had a choice to make. He could have played bishop to a3, which is what he recommended in his notes but he was a bit worried about queen to a5. After bishop takes c5, queen takes c5, white could actually play rook to b5, but after queen d6 and queen b3, white's got a nice battery against b7, but maybe after b6, there's not much white can do now, and he wasn't really sure what white's plan was, and the main reason he didn't opt for this variation because white has given up one of his bishops, he didn't like giving up the bishop pair, and I'm guessing before computer theory, the bishop pair was actually seen as a really strong entity in games during the 60s, 70s and 80s. Instead, in this position, Miles now played a4, quite a pragmatic move, and Tal played queen to c7. Bishop to a3, hits the knight on c5, and Tal protects it with the move b6. White could have opted for bishop takes c5, after b takes c5 and play rook to b5, hitting the pawn on c5. Black could have played knight to a5 in this position, protecting the pawn on c5, after knight to e4, play knight to b7. And Miles recommends in his notes that now Tau should drop his bishop back to d7, and white has to move backwards with the rook. 
But actually, after rook to b5, this isn't actually the best move because black can play knight to b4 here and sort of trap this rook away from the rest of its pieces. After say knight to b3, black can actually play a move knight to a2. And if rook takes c5, black can play queen d6. The point being that now black hits the knight on b3, hits the rook on c5, and prepares knight to c3. Sure, black has lost the pawn, but now black is gaining a lot of play. So after b6 protecting the knight from Tau, maybe it's best that Miles didn't take the knight on c5. Instead he played knight to g5, unleashing the bishop on g2 and rerouting this knight to e4. In his notes he says that black can't take on d3 here. So if knight takes d3, the pawn on e2 is actually pinned. But white can actually play h3, hit the bishop away, and after bishop f5, recapture the knight. However, what happens if bishop takes d3 here? Because now the bishop is hitting two rooks. We get a very interesting position. If rook e1, the bishop will capture on b1, and queen takes b1. So white has two pieces for the rook in this position, but white is also two pawns down. I still think white is better here, but it would have made a very interesting game if Tau had gone in for this. Perhaps he was wise not to take on d3, instead Tau now played knight to a5. Miles played knight g4, and in Miles' notes he says that if knight takes e4, knight takes e4, he's probably just equal and slightly better for white. Black also has the option of playing knight a to b7 here, and if we capture on c5 and play knight to e4 again, Knight takes e4, bishop takes e4. Again, we're in a quite equal position where both sides have got two bishops and equal material. So after this move, in the actual game, Tau played bishop to d7, hitting the pawn on a4 with the knight and bishop. For this reason, Miles took on c5, b takes c5 was played, and Miles now reignites his threat of taking on c5 by playing knight to e4. So Tau now has a choice to make. The two choices are knight to b7, our rook takes b1. If rook takes b1, then the queen would recapture, and black should now probably play rook to b8. If black instead takes on a4, white can recapture on c5, and now he's threatening all sorts, like queen to b4 ideas. So in this position, rook b8 should be played, and queen a2 sidesteps the rook, knight to b3, and rook to b1. Black can play bishop takes a4, but actually now white gets in a superior position by playing knight takes c5. After knight takes c5, white can play rook takes b8 check. After queen captures, bishop takes c5, white actually emerges from this messy position a pawn up. So for this reason, after knight to e4 from miles, Tau played knight to b7 to protect the pawn on c5. Now visually this looks really bad for black, because it looks like the knight is just so desperate to protect his c5 pawn. But actually it's not so bad. There's not really much white can do to take advantage. In the game queen c2 was played by white and Tau played queen to a5, again hitting this pawn on a4. Miles played queen to d2, threatening moves like rook takes b7 and hitting the queen on a5. If black takes on a4 with the queen, white can play bishop takes c5 and actually emerges in a superior position. For instance, if knight takes c5 here, white can recapture and is threatening to take the queen and the bishop. And there's actually nothing black can do to defend it. If black takes on d2 in this position, white can recapture and two pieces are now hitting the knight on b7. So black has to play bishop to c8, or they'll lose the c5 pawn. But actually then white can just take on c5 anyway because this knight on b7 is now pinned. So in this position after queen d2 from miles, black has to be very careful. And Tau plays the only move that actually doesn't lose. He plays queen to c7. So it has to be very accurate in that position. In the game, Miles played a5. But queen f4 was also given as a really solid move for white here. And in Miles' notebook, he went through a few variations. For instance, if bishop to e5 from black, he would have continued with queen to h4. After bishop c6, he would have played knight to g5, threatening mate on h7. After h5, he'd take on c6, after queen takes c6, play queen to e4, hitting two pieces. Black can pl still play queen c7, but now white's plan is just to double rooks. 
after knight to a5, take on b8, rook takes b8, and play queen d5. Now white's hitting the pawn on f7 and the pawn on c5, and has a much better game at the moment. After queen f4, e5 was also a move that Miles went through, and he would have played knight to f6 in this position. And if king h8, he would have played queen to h4, again threatening mate on h7, and white is doing much better in this position. Pretty much bishop takes f6 is forced, and after queen takes f6, queen king g8, he could play bishop c1 and start threatening the dark squares around the black king. So a very nice position for white. So if white played queen to f4, queen takes f4 was also an option. Miles would have continued with g takes f4, and if rook f c8 in this position, he would have continued with knight takes c5, knight takes c5, and capture the rook on b8. Captures and bishop takes c5, and white's in a better position with a pawn up. Instead of rook fc8, black could play bishop takes a4 actually. Knight takes c5, knight takes c5, bishop takes c5. Captures, captures, bishop h6, and white would have played rook to a1, and in a vastly superior endgame. So here maybe Miles should have played queen to f4. Instead he played a5. Threatening moves like a6, putting pressure on black's position. But Tau played accurately, he played bishop c6 in the game. Miles played a6, hitting the knight on b7. And Tau took on e4, and Miles recaptured on e4. a takes b7 here was also an option, but actually after bishop takes g2, king takes g2. Black can take on b7, and after recaptures, black delivers a check which actually gives black a slightly better game. So after black takes a knight on e4, white recaptures. Black plays knight to d6, hitting the bishop. Miles retreats his bishop back to g2. Tau plays rook fc8, and Miles now prepares to try and double rooks on the b file. Tau just takes his rook off though, and after queen takes b2, rook b8. Black now has the open b file, but Miles plays bishop to b7 and shoves a bishop on this square. Just a quick note that if now knight takes b7, white can play rook to b1 and play a takes b7 at a later date with a superior endgame. I don't think black wants a pass pawn on the 7th rank to defend all the way through. So after bishop to b7, instead of taking, Tau played h5. Miles played rook b1 to secure the bishop. And Tau played bishop to e5. And in Miles' notes, he actually missed e4 here. He said he was very short of time, but he recommends e4. And he thinks that this would have won the game for white. This is mainly because now white is threatening to play f4. He thought that if black played g5 here, he could actually play queen to d2 to hit the pawn. And black's now got two moves left. Bishop f6 was one of them. But if he played bishop to f6, he would have played the move e5, hitting the bishop. And after, say, bishop takes e5, he would have played queen takes g5, bishop g7, and queen takes c5 with a very easy game for white. f6 was also an option for black, but then Miles would have played f4. After g takes f4, g takes f4, knight takes b7, f takes e5, and knight d8. In his notes, rook takes b8 was played, queen takes b8, and e takes f6, e takes f6, bishop takes c5, with a better endgame for white. But actually, after this f6 move, f4 can be played, g takes f4. But now, actually, the computer recommends bishop d5 is just winning for white. And this because after, let's say, knight to f7, white now reroutes, plays rook f1. And if f takes g3, play moves like queen h6, e6, bishop takes, g takes h2, king h2, queen e7, and white's got moves like queen g6, with nice moves like bishop c5, pulling this queen away from defending the knights, and if king h8, just bishop takes f7 with an easy game for white. But I admit this bishop d5 variation was very hard to see. So after bishop to e5, instead of playing e4, Miles played a more tame move, queen to c1. Tau played h4, 
and Miles played queen to g5. Black now took on b7, rook takes b7, rook takes b7, and a takes b7. And Tao played the sneaky move h3, threatening to take on b7 and threaten mate ideas on g2. Miles saw this a mile off though, played f3. Tao played bishop d6, retreating away from the white queen. And Miles now plays queen d5, having to secure this b7 pawn. Tao plays e6, trying to push the queen away, but it retreats to e4. And Tao played queen to a5, threatening queen takes a3. White has to be very careful in this position, but Miles found the only move that saves the game. King f2, stopping any checks. Of course, Tao can take the bishop on a3, but actually after queen c6, there's no way for black to defend this b8 idea or protect the bishop at the same time. Queen c1 would have just led to a straight draw for Tal if he wanted it, because he can play queen to e3 and queen c1 with a perpetual check. Instead, Tal aimed for slightly more. He played queen to b2. Miles took the bishop on b6. Tal took the pawn on b7. And Miles took a pawn on c5. Tal played queen to b1, with ideas of playing queen h1, attacking the pawn on h2. For instance, if queen a7, maybe black could play queen h1. And there still are some ideas for black to try and win the game. But white can hold on with queen to b8. After king h7, white should play g4. After queen g2, king e1. This should be a dead draw because after check, 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 and queen e3, it's just a dead draw. And a perpetual will probably occur. Mainly just due to the fact that this queen is protecting his pawn on h2. After queen b1, Miles actually played queen e5 instead. Queen h1 was played by Tal, and g4 again to protect this pawn on h2 with the queen. And here, a sealed adjournment move was played, which was queen g2. So here, an adjournment happened. And after this adjournment, play continued king e1. I think both players knew it was probably a draw. Queen g1 and king d2. Tal played queen a1. And Miles now tried to set up his own perpetual with g5, stopping the king from getting out. a5 was played, and Miles played queen to b8 check, king g7, queen e5, and king h7 from Tau. Queen c7, attacking the pawn at f7. Tau played queen to b2. King d1 was played, and king g7 from Tau. But here white has to be a bit careful. This is because if white now decides to capture this pawn on a5, black actually wins the game, amazingly. They can play queen to b1 check. After king d2, play queen to b8 and hit this pawn on h2. If queen a1, black can take this pawn, white recaptures, but black can now play e5. And after queen d5 and queen f4 check, e3, queen takes g5. There isn't a way to stop black from getting another queen. Uh, and white has just screwed themselves over by being incredibly greedy in the endgame. So it's correct that white should try and defend this pawn with the queen. So instead, Miles played queen e5. He's too good for that. Queen e5, king g8, queen d6, king g7, queen e5, king h7, and queen c7. Miles sees that his best chance of a draw is to just stay on this diagonal. And this is where a draw was actually agreed. So these two players are both titans of the game. I thought this game was just rather interesting. Obviously I don't think this game shows both players true attacking potential. But I just thought it was a good clash between these two players. There were some interesting ideas that occurred. And I hope you enjoyed the analysis. Please drop me a like, comment or subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more chess videos in the future. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.